welcome back to Brush Up Your Game. We got a comment. Uh, what do we want next? I suggest ranking swarmable ships. Say everything with a cost of 13 or less based on their ability to effectively swarm in a 130 point game. Well, we took that comment and said, eh, 13 might be way too similar. Let's take it up to 16 points. So uh, your mileage may vary, but uh, we're going with a slight twist on it. Um, but keeping with the spirit of the list recommendation uh, with me, as always, I have Tristan on these rankums. Howdy. And uh, we will uh, guide you through our top 10 swarm ships. Uh, we took it both as the generic ships. Uh, so if you want named ships, I think that pretty much says uh, run like named Jemadar ships. They're the ones that interact with each other the best. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, so uh, uh, and I know this much from putting stuff together in the lists uh, a lot of a lot of agreement but also a lot of uh, discrepancy so that should make for some interesting ideas here yeah a lot, of, a lot more options than i would have uh, initially thought when, when looking through utopia so yeah which is good um but i'm going to kick things off with my number 10 and uh, my number 10 is the Klingon Katinga, specifically the one with the tech slot. Uh, because if you're going to swarm Klingon ships, it should have a tech, whether you want Klingon cloaking device, you want reinforced hull, uh, or you want both. Because ultimately, you probably want to find a way to have both, maybe. That's a lot of investment. Uh, but this is a good ship. Has four dice. Uh, is not the best Klingon swarmer. No, that'll come later, but it's a good one. Uh, yeah, no doubt. Uh, I, I love the Katinga as a swarm, as we'll see later. Um, I got the Tholians. I, I figured I had to put them on the list because they are like the original swarm ship from Star Trek. They Probably, are. Maybe the, you know, one of the few ships we actually see on screen that are actually swarming. Are they really great in game? Yeah. Uh, they're definitely due for a recosting. Uh, I do think that the uh, Tholian web uh, conceit uh, of their their secondary weapon is very interesting. Um, if you get a bunch on the on the board and and you let, have your opponent cross that threshold, that that can hurt. Um, but uh, it's more of a fun thing than anything else. It certainly is a fun thing. I I do enjoy it. I um, the one way I have enjoyed tholians a lot is in uh peak performance where yes when a ship dies it gets to come back so um, but it's still good and uh i still like it uh my number nine is a constitution class and i think for 16 points you're hard pressed to get a whole lot better than three dice on a 180 arc and uh, it, it means you got a little bit of forgiveness in your maneuvering. Uh, you've got two crew slots and a weapon slot. There's a lot to like there. And uh, that's why, for me, the Constitution slides up to number nine. Constitution is an interesting choice. Uh, and minor spoiler makes my list for sure. Um uh, yeah, you, you don't think of that one as a swarm ship, yeah. but it, it definitely has potential there. Oh, yeah, plus it supports fighters. So if you really want to go swarmy, yeah, you can go like four f constitutions, three sets of fighters, and you're going to be tougher to kill than you would think. Yeah, that's a good point. I got another maybe more more fun ship. It, it, you know, uh, Offensively, it's not going to do much of anything, but it's cheap. Uh, it's got the tech slot. You can load it up with, uh, you know, fun little uh, hook mines or what have you. Um, I did face uh, Dan in, in, uh, in our Fremont League last, I think it was last year, but he had nothing but Romulan science vessels with mines. And it was probably overkill, but it certainly was uh, challenging to try to navigate those mines, and I will say I lost. So for that reason alone, I figured I had to make the list. Okay, fair. 
Yeah, cloaked mind swarms. Very annoying. Um, well, for my number eight, I went with Romulans, but I went with Romulan uh, yeah. drone ships uh, because I, you get three attack dice. You add in three defense dice and five total durability plus access to enough tech to be just annoying if you want to be. Uh, it's not like you're going to win everything because of these, mm -hmm. but you're going to be hard pressed to be one shot unless you roll dice as poorly as I do. Uh, yeah, they're, they're interesting. They're kind of slow. They don't have any maneuver faster than three, but they're pretty evasive and I like them. Yeah. They, they, uh, I'll be, uh, definitely, uh, overlooked a little bit. Maybe they are. Uh, overlooked. Uh, yeah. Yeah, when you think about Romulan ships, you go, oh, they don't have a lot going on on kind of the lower end of the cost spectrum, but this this is a solid option. Drone ships and D7s. Yeah, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Speaking of D7s, I have the, the Klingon D7 here. Uh, I mean, three attack. It's got a battle station. Uh, you know, the I think the only... Well, other than the the Kelvin Warbirds, you know, the only Klingon ship that has a native battle station. It's only 11 points. I mean, you can load up the board with these if you want. And, and really, if you're talking about you know, Swarm, I think you put 11 on the board. Still have enough points left over for a Galron and a, a Denatra or something to, to add some, some attack value. Um, you know, just crowd the board yeah. with that. It's, uh, you, know, you know, that that is the pure swarm concept there it is pure swarm i do like it uh spoiler it shows up later on my list <laughs> i'm sure it does uh my number seven is the oh, andorian okay. battle cruiser and i don't know i don't quite know why i'm not this like massive andorian fan but i played him a few times in missions I like what they bring to the table. They've got decent durability. They fly reasonably well. I think it's more they've got some nice upgrades that you can use to enhance the ships just a bit that aren't like super overpriced. And if you swarm with Andorian battle cruisers, you've got three dice, 180 arcs, battle stations access. You're going to be decently offensive and you got enough durability to take a punch or two. I like it. Yeah, uh, it basically kind of, you know, again, uh, constitution class, but it has a tech slot. We've talked before about how much we like having tech slots on things. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, I got the uh, the Gemadar attack ship, uh, maybe just because uh, I hate seeing these things in Alliance. Uh, so uh, yeah. uh, they definitely swarm very well. Uh, 13 points, you know, 3-2, three, 3-2, two, three, two, has a nice assortment of uh, upgrade slots. Um, you know, uh, you just would uh, work well with some of the named uh, attack, uh, Gemadar attack ships that, uh, that offer some, some bonuses to to their, their brethren there. So, um, you know, they're... they're uh, they don't look so scary on paper, but once you get it into one of those uh, Alliance missions and they tear you up, uh, you get some new respect for them. Yeah. Uh, further spoiler, they show up later on my list. <laughs> I'm sure they do. Uh, yeah, they're they're good. They didn't used to be as good, but they got nice support. Um, yeah, my number six is the Maquis Raider. And I know, I know you see the printed 20, mm -hmm. but it's... It's been recosted. I don't know why it doesn't show up a little cheaper. I, it's probably the slot loadout I went with. Um, but they are cheaper now. They're even cheaper in spuds. Maybe. Maybe not. I need to check on that. But they're maneuverable. That's the real yeah. uh, cut of their jib. Uh, yeah, they're 13 points. That's what they should be. Uh, mm. But they... The only maneuver on their dial is a red three come about. They've got two and three turns that are white. They've got 90, 90 arcs. They just, they fly well. They've got nice upgrades if you want them. 
to be even more maneuverable, more slippery, and they're just potent. Uh, yeah. Um, looking here. And you can run either crew double weapon or double crew single weapon. So you got choices in terms of how you want to uh, outfit the ship. Or don't at all and just run 13 point ships and run 10 of these. Uh, probably not the best choice for life. Uh, definitely <laughs> not going to compete with a Borel. But, uh, you know, not a bad ship at all. Oops. Yeah, well, you know what? Uh, looking back at um, Utopia, I guess my eyes are getting old. So the Breen is not actually, I thought it was, it said 16. It's actually 18 points. So I guess, uh, wah, wah. I uh, I went over our limit here. So ah. uh, I, I'm going to just pretend that's not no. there. No, and, the, the uh, new ones no? from okay. Alliance are 16. Yeah. Oh, the 16? Okay. Well, okay. Spuds oh, okay. Is, so spuds that's right, because I'm using Utopia yeah. Spuds, and it's not in Utopia Spuds. Yeah. There we go. All right. Perfect. All right. So I, I'm, not, I'm not a total fool. Um, so for 16 points, first of all, great cost reduction over the oh, generic. Yeah. Uh, probably the only other one that maybe be even close is the reduction on the uh, Klingon Raptors. But um, mm -hmm. I, I mainly picked this one because, first of all, great slot uh slot ability uh mm -hmm. you know four four slots on a 16 point generic fantastic um it's got four hole so you know it's got that tech slot my thought is i'm putting reinforced hull on there and now you have a, a you know a ship that's going to take nine points of damage and you can you know run five of them uh that's uh you know maybe get a, a little bit of, a little bit more damage uh, ability there with a you know a Dinatra or some some weapon adds ons and stuff. I think that could be a pretty formidable force. It could be, yeah. I uh, I think I missed it because it's not correct in spuds. But even if it did, I'm not sure that it bumps anything out. I I just have never. I like Breen in the show. I don't like what happened to them in Attack Wing, and until I see otherwise, I don't think I'm ever going to uh, change my mind. I'll be proven wrong someday, spectacularly, and uh, then I'll eat my words, but yeah. Uh, Definitely an unproven element so far, but I think they have potential. I do think they have potential. I, I like that much. So um, yeah, my number five was your number eight. It's the D7, yep. and, uh, you know, very very good ship for 11 points. You're getting three attack dice with offensive quality. You don't have the same defensive durability that you do with cloaking ships, but you got enough to be scary, uh, and 11 points hitting hard is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I'm kind of catching up to you here with the Constitution. Um, I mean, 16 points, you can run a bunch of them. Uh, type 8 phasers on there, so now you have 4 attack. Uh, it's got a 180-degree firing arc, and it's still got pretty decent maneuverability. I mean, it, it's got a, got a lot going on there, um, and you can, again, run 5 of them, uh, 6 yeah. of them uh, in a fleet if you wanted, uh, and still hit pretty good I, I i like that yeah no argument there uh and then i followed the same pattern you did after the d7 comes the gem hadar attack ship there you go uh, which very much a solid ship at 13 points and uh i think for me it's more than just alliance i've seen what they do both as a generic swarm but also what they can do with some named ability ships mixed in with them so uh, I know that wasn't part of the criteria, but if you use them, use the generics as part of a swarm and bump them up, buff them up, uh, you've, you've got something really potent going. Yeah. Uh, kind of on the other side of that, that fence there is uh, the, uh, bane of Jemadar attack ship's existence, the Defiant class. 
a little bit cheaper than the Constitution. Um, a little bit better defense there with the agility. It's got an extra slot there, which is a double weapon, which makes sense. So you, you could run Type 10 phasers on here. Uh, you can put a, a blade of uh, armor on there to get some more defense. Um, and you can you know, still have some space left over to, to put a, a couple decent captains here and there. Uh, I've run on run up against a, a couple uh, four ship de defiant swarms before, and they're they're not uh, they're not fun to to deal with. So very maneuverable ships too. Um, uh, you know, so uh, they have a lot going for them. They are maneuverable. I will give them that. All right, I'm grabbing that. Uh, yeah, my number three is the Gorn Raider. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, did get a bit of a discount, not reflected here, um, but Gorn are down at, well, let's double check and make sure I say it correctly. Uh, they're down at 14. And, uh, I mean, you stick Disruptor Bombardment on it, and you, you start swarming Disruptor Bombardment, and I know that's a bit pricey, but... It's only, it's actually not, it's two points. So for 16 points, you're swarming Gorn with Disruptor Bombardment. And that's just crazy good to me. Yeah, plus uh, what, Gorn sensors are two, three points, right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you still you still have a, you know, a pretty deadly ship at under 20 points. So. Now I will say it's, I put the wrong one in there, but there is a generic Gorn that goes crew weapon yeah. tech. Uh, yep. That's the one you want, not the crew tech version. Uh, yeah, I think I just grabbed the first one I saw, but yeah, that that's well, my I, bad. <laughs> it's all right. It's it's out there. It's it, there's there's all there's a bajillion generics of everything, so yeah. it's hard to keep track of them all. But um, well, I have the Katinga. This is uh, probably my personal favorite swarm ship, just because. Uh, 16 points, I can run reinforced hull, and now yeah. I have a six hold ship that has four attack dice that can cloak and sensor echo. Um, makes it really, really, really tough. Uh, you can run five of these pretty easily and still have plenty of room left over for some really nice uh, captains. Um, Dinatra, Gold Turan, Galran. Uh, I love running Picard with Esri, and now all of a sudden you have a bunch of ships that are throwing six, seven attack dice with quality, and are really hard to one shot. And they have, you know, decent maneuverability on top of it. Uh, can be pretty nasty. Certainly. Yeah, the Katinga. I don't see it run a whole lot, but whenever it does, I'm always like, ah. Oh. I should have taken that out a long time ago. So I was underestimated. It's fun. Yeah. It is fun. It's a little, I'm not going to say it's too good. Nothing's necessarily too good, but it's, it's very good. Um, I have a feeling we line up here with the last two. Probably. Yeah. Uh, sabers may have become too good. You give me, Three two three two for twelve points. That just feels too good, especially because the defiant at three two three three is fifteen. Yeah, I mean I know it gets a tech slot in addition, but it's paying three points for a shield and a tech slot, and I guess a slightly better maneuver dial, but not much. I don't know. Saber just I mean, felt really good. I guess they needed to be cheaper than Brels, but then my argument is Brels are underpriced. I mean, yeah, Saber, it's... Uh, I know we had some discussions in the Fremont uh, board because before the Saber class came out with Ships of the Lion, we had our spuds costing. I think it was like 14 points, something like that. And we were... You know, kind of debating what is the recost going to be is it going to be 14 15 points i think we generally decided that we'd be happy at like 13 14 and so 12 just seems you know crazy good um yeah the double weapons you know natural fit for type 10 phasers here so now you have four attack dice with some nice built-in quality um and you can still spam like seven of these on the board and and 
have uh, some space for some nice uh, captains. I know Nick in our Fremont League, he's run a couple Saber Swarms now uh, pretty effectively in, in uh, some some tournaments and games. So uh, definitely is going to give the Burrell a run for its money, but not quite enough to knock it off the top. No. When, when I saw, I came up against a Saber Swarm in uh, the Earth Romulan War, and I kind of went, yeah. Oh, it is that good. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So number one, I just grabbed a Burrell. I didn't. Yep. Nothing was wrong with any choice. Um, you can you can swarm independent. You know, Klingon Burrells. Uh, you can swarm Ferengi Burrells. You can swarm the Bird of Prey. Just make sure it has a tech slot, or if you don't care to upgrade it at all, it doesn't really matter. Just pick a ship. Yeah, it, it's yeah. it's this thirteen point ridiculousness. It's yeah, just yeah, thirteen points that can cloak and fire four dice. That's that's what's really good. Yeah, it's it, it's great, and you're right. The it's I mean, if you can have the tech slot, it's nice. If you want to put Klingon cloaking device on there, but you know, you don't, no one's going to have eight of those available to themselves in, in, in real life. No. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's such a, a good stat line, uh, you know, fragile, but you're just going to overwhelm your opponent anyway. Uh, I did include uh, just the, the, the Dominion version. It's technically not the same. Uh, I, I wouldn't run probably an entire fleet of the bird of prey because it, uh, it's not quite as maneuverable, and I feel like that having that extra maneuverability can be really key in in a a large fleet. Yes. Uh, but I, I definitely would consider running probably one or two, especially uh, if I want to run Gold Turan without a cross faction penalty, because he's he's a great option to boost attack and defense dice at the same time. So. No, I like it. That's. Yeah, I'm. So I'm I'm curious. Are you are you just not a Gorn fan, or did you even consider the Gorn? Uh, no, I consider them. Um, I don't know if there's a good reason that I, I left them off. Um, I guess I just like uh, uh, maybe I felt they were just a little too fragile. Uh, okay. You know, I, I guess I tend to, to lean towards ships that have a well, you know, some some more defense. Uh, minded stuff but you're right i mean i you know uh thinking about it i've run up against some generic gorn swarm fleets with nothing but disruptor bombardment and gorn sensors and they're not fun to play with that's for sure no i i just kind of go they're the swarm that beats swarming yeah and i i don't know it's you know, I, I'm not here to cause the controversy or the controversy, as it might be. Um, I, I'm here to, you know, I, I respect opinions and differences of opinions. And I'm certainly not going to, you know, you can critique my list and go, where's the defiant class? And I go, I just haven't swarmed defiant classes. And I, I was so entrenched in the camp that defiant is just a bad ship class for a long time because it was so expensive i haven't come around yeah. on aside from the sao paulo that it's good uh, well and there's probably someone going well where's the miranda you know because oh. uh, you, you can turn that into a torpedo boat but you uh, i feel like uh with the with with the saber class now uh kind of replaces that uh miranda is a, is a cheap fed swarm ship so don't, yeah don't get me wrong i love the reliant and i have for a long time um i i can't justify running the okay even in spuds costing which we definitely have to go back and fix this the miranda's 12 points well i think that's i think that's the um because it was recosted with uh, to boldly go, and I think it is at twelve points. So, um, okay, then Whiz Kids messed up. <laughs> well, it just kind of yeah, it kind of shows maybe uh, the uh, maybe a bit of short sightedness in in uh, you know 
product development there that you, yeah, you within can't a, have a Miranda matter of a couple 12, years. Yeah. Saber at 12. Yeah. That Saber's got one more attack die. I guess you can argue Miranda has 180 arc, but yeah, I think that's, that's about it. But, uh, probably doesn't not enough to justify, um, it being 12 points. It probably no. should be 10, maybe something I, like that. I'd settle at 11. 11. I'd call yeah. it a difference, but anyway, well, uh, um, yeah. No, it's it's viable. Um, if if you wanted us to do, and uh, I mean the comment did, but if we took a look at ships at thirteen or under, the Miranda would have been there. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, um, but I don't know yeah. what else. You know, and a lot of these won't. I mean, uh, most of our most of our list. You know the. Gorn wouldn't be there. That was 14. Yeah, Katinga. Katinga's out. Constitution's out. Defiance out. Constitution, Defiant. Maquis. Uh, yeah. Andorian, uh, yeah. Drone. Yep. Yeah, it would uh, be a very different list. Tholians stay. Well, the Tholians haven't been recosted, so I think yeah. they'd be out too because they're 14, right? Under spuds, I guess. Under, well, yeah, we're doing spuds, yeah. That's the only thing I can even base it on. RSV stays. Uh, Breen I think are uh, gone. It's... Yeah, at under at thirteen under, I think you have to put the. I'd have to consider the Klingon Raptor possibly. So oh. that's a, a three attack for eleven points. I've but... done that fleet. It is not nice. It... But the the D seven's better. Same stats plus you get battle stations. Yeah. So. Yeah, the Raptor is not fun to fly. Swarmed. Yeah. It exists, and that's about as much as I can say about it. <laughs> it exists. I I'm not in the participation trophy world. I don't want to give a ship a trophy just because it existed. Yeah, we could give Klingon D7s and then we could give Romulan D7s out. Yeah, I thought about that. I thought about it. Uh, but yeah, I so I I'm sorry I didn't know who left the comment, but. Uh, I know your initial request was for 13 or less. I We had to tweak it a bit because that's the only way to make a, for us to have made a viable top 10 list. Because I, I just didn't see a path forward. And Tristan, I don't think you really saw a path forward with only 13 or less. Yeah, I mean, it would have been a, it would have been a very different list. Uh, and it would have been more of a list of, all ships 13 points or less you know there there wasn't a lot of variety or, or not enough quality there yeah, I, I guess think, that would have been a true at, rank them though yeah well yeah, yeah yeah i suppose it would have been yeah yeah but um but i think there's definitely i, I think if you look at 16 points i mean you're still you can still load up you know, uh, you know five six ships that's a decent swarm um and yeah. maybe find some ships you would not have considered otherwise um, at that price point so agreed and, and i think that's the idea uh, we both went with was okay by running a ship this cheap we can put four or more typically five or more on the board and make them work yeah and i i think that's just a play style you don't normally see so um i'd probably argue with about any of these, if you ran that many of them, or some combination of them, you don't have to run all of exactly the same, though it is easier if you do because the dials are identical. Um, you make a pretty effective swarm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think uh, you know once once you you're able to hit, you know, putting six ships on the board with you know three dice and some quality. Um, that's going to overwhelm most, you know, your your average uh, opponent fleet. You know, normally running three ships. If you can do it, get a two to one ratio on them. I don't know if it really matters what what you're running at that point. Uh, you, you're going to be able to, to, you know, unless they're they're doing a bunch of disruptor sweeps or something. But uh, you can have an advantage. <laughs> Yay! Even more anti swarm tech. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm looking forward to those disruptor swarms, but uh, 
Yeah. Uh, same here. Disruptor Sweep's going to uh, revolutionize some gameplay. Because it's a good mm. weapon in and of itself. And it uh, changes the face of the game. And then, yeah, and it's not restricted, which which is not, not restricted, and there's no additional cross-faction penalty, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, maybe a little too good, but not going to complain. Nope. So, all right. Well, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, it for us, other than um, maybe asking what ship might you like to see be able to swarm whether it's in the game or not huh i think maybe like a norway or a um norway class steam runner class steam runner, yeah. get... oh i always thought those are pretty cool yeah um or uh kind of in that same vein from from an earlier fight with the borg uh is it the challenger class the the one to sell oh yeah uh, ships yeah that'd be kind of fun um yeah i'm trying to try to think where, what else what else would swarm well i guess if uh you know you're thinking of swarms uh, uh star trek beyond where you had the uh oh the that swarm weapon or the Sulaban cell ships but i, I know there's a yes. there's a mission uh mission play where you, you basically do that yeah so it's not those, very good are, I've never played it, but I know I have the mission card for it. It is cooperative. Uh, I'll give it that. It, it, yes. it does hold up. I think if you play pure era play, don't don't go into like any generics, but like play what comes on the NX pack, play what comes on a Dakir pack or the uh, you know a specific uh, Vulcan pack. It it could be a lot of fun. Um, you know what? I'm realizing we neither of us uh, wanted to swarm with the Kazon Raider. It hasn't been recosted, but under Spuds, it's theorized at 12 points. That that could have been okay. Is it, is it a two attack? It's like a two two three three or something uh, like two, that. Two two three two. two. three two. Okay, yeah. but it, it's 180 with battle stations and double crewed weapon. It's not, yeah, maybe not too bad. It's it's otherwise it's pretty much uh, sounds like a lot like the Miranda stat wise. It pretty much is. Yeah. Without scan. Yeah. Yeah. It's a Miranda without technology advancement. Uh, yeah, I was just thinking about that. Maybe some Zindi stuff could have been swarmable. I uh I I did think what well, was it? I don't know if it was cheap enough. I mean, maybe under spuds costing the uh, reptilian. Yeah, fifteen Zindi. under uh, spuds four one four I, one. Yeah, I did consider that because with uh, with that four one four one, uh, you can put um, that was a Zindi weapon where you get a plus one for. Uh, so it'd be like for for twenty points, you'd get a five attack ship. Yeah. Um, that's not it's not too bad. Actually, even the insectoid at three two three one. For 12 points weapon tech man yeah, it's not too bad it's not bad it's a, this uh, is, i mean that's essentially i mean that's essentially the the saber at that point yeah you could put a uh, trelly yeah. md on that for a little extra durability if you really wanted to it's not a bad little add-on yes yeah, that would be a bad ship yeah I, I yeah mean, I, I feel like the zindi get uh get looked over i I mentioned this before. I would like to see a Zindi pack. I think they they deserve it. Absolutely, they do. Um, even if it's three Zindi ships and uh, and a Alt Future Enterprise, that would be um, that would, that could no, be interesting. Yeah. Delphic Expanse pack. Yeah, yeah, I, could, I can go for that. Yeah. Ah. Uh, here you go. I got, I got the the ship, of all ships to to swarm. Um, let me just make sure it it fits. The Olympic <laughs> class. Oh yeah, because that's what uh, one one 15. five three fifteen points under spuds. Uh, crew double tech. 
You can definitely make it pretty defensive with two tech if you want. That's about it. Uh, or, or here, if you want to be really silly, the Bajoran Solar Sailor. <laughs> Six points. I, I, one, two, three, zero. Yeah, I, I did uh, briefly consider the Bajoran Raider. Okay, uh, that's that's viable. Yeah. Um, here, he's, here's your bonus story. If you have listened to the end of the episode, you get the bonus insider story. <laughs> uh, so back when I was uh, in contact with WizKids and my NDA has expired, I checked, I reread the contract. It was two years from the last, from the date of termination. Um, when the boosters came out. And we all knew the Bajoran booster was bad, right? Yeah. It was underpowered. Um, I, I put the request in. I said, hey, can we make an official ruling where players could run two Bajoran interceptors, the named and the generic, for 32 points and make eight points of upgrades to get to their 40 points? And... It it died. It never. I never got a response, which is, of course, a yeah. no. But I thought, you know, I always thought that that was a good fix for that in a booster situation because they couldn't compete by upgrades. That was not how they were going to do it. But if you could give them a second ship, where they're yeah. two on one now, you give them a little bit of the numbers game it would have helped. And I don't know. I wasn't trying to be a thorn. I was trying to be helpful. I was trying to prevent some of the griping that happened. And I knew they couldn't go and repackage anything, but it was, you know, you make a ruling and then the, the TO just brings an extra Bajoran ship and base plate and you just have it ready to go for whoever draws the Bajoran ship and then they get it back at the end of the day and life's okay. Yeah, I like that. Um, uh, I, I feel like the uh, for Alliance Part Two, they should have done something similar where weren't, you would have the option of one of your starter ships for Klingons would be two birds of prey. Um, oh, okay. Because you know, they're just so cheap. But um, I realize it might might be even too powerful because obviously the Burrells are really good. But yeah, um, yeah, it's too bad the the Bajoran Raiders that 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 is, you know. A really cool ship design, and they did a really nice job with the with the miniature, for, at least for the. I don't know about the booster pack. I I, I don't have that one, but the the standard ship pack, um, and it's just a exceedingly over underwhelming ship, unfortunately. Yeah, it got a little too metallic-y, but it's still a cool design. Just it was a little yes. too um, purple, bright purple. Yeah, it is, it is purple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with some nice yellow contrast on it. Yeah, it's not that it was ugly by any means. It was just I liked the original paint better. I liked almost. I think I liked all of the repaints better, except the Bajoran one. I don't know. I'd have to go back and look at all of them again. But yeah, we can do a. Uh... Top ten repaints. Oh, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. The cosmetic side of the game was never truly my forte. I, I've always kind of said, uh, "Art is art. Paint jobs are paint jobs, and they're all in the eye of the beholder." So, anyway, hey, we've gotten to we've gotten way off track. This now feels more like an episode of Warp Core Breach, but. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I don't mind it. Lots of fun. Um, people are here for the rankings, David. Uh, I think on, people stay, are here stay just stay to hear us here. talk at some point. <laughs> I think I think people like uh, like hearing people talk Star Trek, talk Attack Wing. Um, that's what's fun. It is. I I know for me, um, back when other people cared and did podcasts on the game uh, uh red maneuvers there were a few other podcasts back in the day um, that's what i i just listened to them because i liked hearing people talk 
talk about the game and uh, I just turn it on and listen while I did other stuff and um, that's the fun of it and that's part of what I've tried to get to nowadays is just hey uh, for the most part you can just turn on what I'm doing and listen along and have fun with it yeah it's nice to engage uh, when, when you can't engage directly with the game mm-hmm. uh, to still have that engagement in some other form yeah I, I do think there's room for a, a more uh, competitive look at the game because uh, that is certainly not something I'm providing anymore but uh, I know the I've always thought it would be nice you know we have we have a lot of folks especially in Fremont who record games um, and uh I don't know if I'd ever have the time, but uh, to go back and maybe uh, have, you know, uh, do highlights and have someone break down, okay, like, you know, here's where this game went wrong for this player. Or here's here's how this mood played out, and this is why this, you know. Yeah, I think it'd be, I think there, there's there's room for it. It's just finding someone who has the, the acumen to do it. Yeah, highlights is a tough, uh, a very tough editing job. Yes. I mm-hmm. have... I messed around with it years ago when I used to have a a featured table at the events I went to. And I said, this is far too much work. I'm spending hours trying to edit this game down and it's just easier to put it up. Yeah. As is. Um, Which I know is not the... uh, the answer people want. I, I, it's not a skill set I have to do highlights. I am happy I, to be I, a consumer of highlights. Yeah, I, I tried it once with one of the games I recorded, and you're right. It was, um, it's it's tricky because it's you know you you want to you want to try to condense it down into you know a digestible format, but then you're taking a two hour match down to twenty thirty minutes maybe. Which even then is still kind of long, and then yeah. you, you're trying to then describe, you know, okay, in this upcoming clip, here's here's what led to this, so you have some context, and so there's there's a lot of a lot of moving parts, and you're right, it's, it is easier just to here slap two hour uh, video up there without any context than to try to provide all that in depth analysis. But um, yeah, I think uh, years ago when there used to be commentary of like semi-final and finals matches that was a good a good balance because um, the people doing commentary were streaming it um, and they could hear what the players were saying the players couldn't mm-hmm. hear them sure. but it was you know it's it's just time it's time it's effort it's um and I think the downside is if there's not an audience for it, you feel like your efforts aren't worth the the reward. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, there's a, there's a there has to be a, a a payoff at the end. There uh, does in some fashion. And um, yeah, I I don't know. It's a it's a tough trade. I. I have other thoughts. I'm not 100% sure there's thoughts I want to put on uh, a live or a, a recording, but I have thoughts. Um, but, hey, you know, again, if you've gotten this far and that's something you're really interested in, um, leave a comment and um, I'll see what can be done about it. I make zero promises other than I will look and see what can be done about it. If that's something that would intrigue you. So, um, yeah, my, my time is, uh, limited and gets more limited starting in, uh, the second week of August, because that's when the school year starts Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, adding a 30 to 40 minute commute one way is not, uh, in the best interest of free time, but (laughs) yeah, that's, I hate, hate how work gets in the way of, you know, a fun, having fun. Yeah. yeah. 
but it's necessary. It's a necessary evil. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Hey, everybody who, who watched uh, the rankings and then the after show, uh, thank you. <laughs> really appreciate your time. Uh, if this much interests you, let us know. Uh, Tristan and I might do more of this stuff, too. So uh, thank you all for your time. Appreciate it. Check out Tristan's channel, as always. His links are in the description. Uh, until next time, keep brushing up your game. Take care.